In this video, you're going to learn about CSS3 3D graphics and animation effects. Now, as you can see on the right side of the screen, there are four div elements, and they have some gradient effects applied to them. And when we relaunch this web page, we're also going to see some animation effects. So let's start on the left side of the screen, and as you can see in line 7, the first step is to create an HTML page with div elements, which you've already done in this code sample. And the second step is to create a CSS style sheet that we'll look at in a minute. And that style sheet is going to contain selectors for the linear div elements, which are the div elements here in lines 25 through 28. And then we'll also create some keyframe rules that have animation effects. And then we're going to reference one keyframe rule in each of the selectors that match these div elements below. And finally, we need to reference the CSS style sheet in the web page. And as you can see, in lines 19 and 20, we've already done that. Now let's take a look at the style sheet. And in particular, we're going to look at the selector for the uh, div element in line 28, whose ID value is linear 4. As you can see, starting in line 3, 93 all the way down to 423 we've got the definition of the linear 4 selector and it's got a lot of properties and uh, values for those properties specified uh, if you look at the right side of the screen on the lower right corner the uh, development over here with the text 4 displayed is the uh, matching development for this selector the font size is 96. There's a stroke and shadow for the text. As you can see, there's, there's a shadow effect here. And there's an absolute position, width, and height. And let's get to the interesting part, which is the background image. Now, in line 401, there's the uh, WebKit prefix definition for the uh, background image property. And, and line 409 essentially have the same thing where we have the non-prefixed property. So they both have the same contents. And so let's take a look at line 401, where you see the gradient is specifies a linear value. So the other value is radial. So in, in these examples, they're all going to be linear gradients. Now, there are two sets of percentages here. Uh, and the first one is the starting point, and the second one is the end point. And the uh, pairs of the, these percentages represent the offset for the horizontal and the vertical direction. So for example, here we have 0% and 100%. That means we start 0% offset from the corner over here, the upper left corner uh, of this um, div element. So offset 0 means we stay put for the horizontal value. 100% means we go the full height of this div element, which means that this is our start point. Similarly, over here, we have 100% and 0%, which means starting from here, we go horizontally the full width over here. And then the second value is 0%, so we don't move from here. So that's the end point. So once again, the start point is the lower left vertex of this development, and the end point is the upper right vertex. Now, if you look at the values of the colors here, you can see that it starts at F00, which is hexadecimal for blue, and it ends at 00F, which is hexadecimal for for blue. And I'm sorry, the uh, start value is red. The color stops specify two values, a percentage offset and a color. So these are actually 0.2 represents 20%, followed by 40, 60, and 80%. And the colors are orange, yellow, green, and blue. Now, if you notice over here, we have, it's very difficult to discern this, but it's actually red, turning kind of an orange color, followed by the yellow, green, and blue, which is what we would expect over here. Now, down below, we have the uh, border radius specified as four pixels. And as you can see, there's a very, very slight rounding effect on each of the four vertices of this development. And then we have a box shadow effect which is specifies uh, 30 pixels and a color of black. And as you can see, you have the corresponding shadow effect. And then finally, we have the animation uh, name and duration. The name of the uh, uh, animation, uh, actual uh, keyframe element, or rule rather, is called lower right. And it's going to last for, for 90 seconds. Now, each of these selectors 
linear one through linear four has a different keyframe rule specified. So for example, the one here in line three, 389 and 390 specifies the uh, animation in the lower left and an, a duration of 90 seconds. So let's take a look at the definition of this keyframe. Now, as you can see, it starts in line 5, and it's actually fairly long. It goes down to line 88. But the, so we'll just take a look at the first part. Essentially, what you do is, in a keyframe, you specify, after the name, a set of uh, values that are uh, listed as percentages. Now, these percentages mean the offset from the start time of the uh, animation effect. So as you saw below, we had 90 seconds uh, specified for the duration. So that means that at the zero percent is the start of the animation and then at one percent this is the animation effect that will take place transitioning from the previous one now one percent of 90 seconds is 0.9 seconds so this here two percent would be double that which is 1.8 seconds and then at the 25 percent point so that would be 25 percent of 90 seconds which is 22 and a half seconds and so forth now notice how we have a variety of functions specified and in line 7 and 8 we have the matrix function which is fairly detailed uh, to, in terms of the functionality it, it's actually the matrix form of the um, other effects that you could uh, create and specify by name such as translate rotate skew and scale so in line 11 you can see we have a translate 3d effect followed by a rotate 3d a skew effect and a scale 3d and on these these effects are actually represented by a matrix and the product of those matrices is calculated and that matrix is used to actually render the effect and that means then that these effects are not rendered serially or sequentially they're actually rendered simultaneously now when you load a web page into a browser and you ref reference a CSS style sheet that has uh, some animation effects, those uh, functions are converted to matrices and the final product is computed before you actually render the um, animation effect. So don't have a whole lot of time to go into the details, but it just gives you an idea of what the definition of the uh, keyframe is and actually the other keyframes are very similar they have a kind of a heterogeneous mix of um, functions specified so let's load the, reload this page so you can get an idea momentarily and the first thing that you see is uh, you actually only see div 1 which uh, is uh, has an ID value of linear 1 and it contains the text string text 1 now you notice that the other animation effects uh, st started to happen and those are effects that last for uh, 90 seconds rather than as opposed to this one which lasts only 30 seconds so it, it kind of creates almost like a delay effect, if you will. That's one way to do that. Now, as you can see, the animation effect for the first div element is finished. So it's that, it's that pretty much at its final position now. The other effects are going to continue. And since they started, uh, they last for 90 seconds. They're going to be 60 seconds longer than this uh, div element's uh, animation effect. So essentially, you can create some very interesting effects by a combination of CSS3 functions. And another thing to keep in mind is that some of these can be very computationally heavy. And so fortunately, there's um, hardware acceleration so that the effects are uh, actually computed using a GPU. Another point to keep in mind is that the effects can be different on different platforms. So for example, on a Windows machine, versus a Mac or on a Linux machine, the effects tend to be different. And sometimes what you will see, in, in the case of animation, that is, and 
what seems to happen, generally speaking, is that the effect on a Windows machine and a Linux machine tend to be similar, more similar to each other, and the MacBook tends to be a, the one that differs from the other two. But they aren't necessarily always exactly the same in the case of the Windows and Linux machine. One thing that uh, tends to happen when there are differences is there's a certain kind of a flickering effect uh, that you'll see, and actually that's part of the reason why the um, style sheet has the uh, string flicker in the in the file name. Now, the uh, reason for this, it's not completely clear to me, but as from what I understand, from what I've been told, it's the differences in drivers, and uh, drivers do have bugs in them, and they've been some of them have been around dormant for a long time, and perhaps CSS3 is bringing those to the forefront. Uh, I'm not really exactly sure, but uh, the thing is that when you do create graphics and uh, animation effects, especially with 3D in CSS3, it's a good idea to test, if possible, the effects on different platforms, and not only on desktops and laptops, but also on uh, mobile devices, tablets. So, for example, on an iPad 3, this code tends to be similar in terms of having a bit of an extra flickering effect, whereas on an Asus Prime with Ice Cream Sandwich, it tends to be more, um, or, or rather less of the flickering. So uh, that gives you an introduction and, and an overview of some of the effects that you can create using CSS3, 3D graphics and animation. And that's all for this video.